Hi, welcome to Chem Center. I'm Brandon Lum. I'm Mel Kirstner. Uh, we have a jam-packed show here today, folks. Today we're going to talk about how LCD and plasma screens are related to the many disciplines of chemistry. Our topics include the production of TVs, watches, the excitation of gases, ionization energy, screen burning, and electrodes in LCD screens. So without further ado, here's our feature presentation. Prepare to be educated. Prepare to be entertained. Prepare, Prepare to, to be, be edutained. First off, we are going to talk about the production of plasma and LCD displays. A major greenhouse gas that is part of the production is nitrogen trifluoride, or NF3. Its shape is trigonal pyramidal. Along the production line, NF3 is used to create microcircuits in flat panel televisions. It is also used to clean CVD reactors. CVD stands for chemical vapor deposition, and CVD reactors are pressured gas chambers in plasma televisions. Now with an increasing demand for televisions, more NF3 is being produced and released into the atmosphere. From 1992 to 2007, the amount of NF3 in the atmosphere increased from 100 tons to 4,000 tons. NF3 is also 17,000 times more effective at warming the atmosphere than equal mass of carbon dioxide. The Kyoto Protocol has not even recognized it as a greenhouse gas, despite its detrimental effects on the planet and the atmosphere. Now, we are going to talk about watches and portable displays. You're probably wondering why these items are a part of this LCD and plasma topic. Well, watches and other portable displays use LCD screens. Watches are powered by the button cell battery. This is because of its small size and it is long lasting. Also, LCD screens are used because of its low power consumption, so a battery is able to support it. Here are the reactions occurring within the cell. The oxidation reaction is solid zinc reacting with two aqueous hydroxide ions. This produces solid zinc oxide, liquid water, and two electrons. The reduction reaction is solid mercury oxide reacting with liquid water and two electrons. This makes liquid mercury and two aqueous hydroxide ions. The anode is where oxidation occurs and the cathode is where reduction occurs. The electrons travel from the anode to the cathode, producing a current. Our next three sections will be related to plasma displays. The excitation of gases is directly related to producing light. The electric current excites the inert gases in the chamber. When the gases return to their normal state, they release ultraviolet light. The UV light strikes a phosphor, exciting it. When the phosphor returns to its relaxed state, it releases visible light. The way plasma displays vary color is by changing the pulse of the electricity. Increasing the pulse increases the color intensity. Decreasing the pulse lowers the intensity. From this, 256 shades of red, green, and blue can be produced, which in turn creates 16,777,216 different colors. Next is how ionization energy is involved in plasma displays. Basically, this is the amount of energy needed for the inert gases to become excited and lose an electron. Since inert gases have a full valence electron shell, a lot of energy is needed to take an electron from them. This is why plasma screens consume high amounts of energy and why plasma is not used in portable devices. Just imagine a portable device using plasma technology it would either have a huge battery or you would have to charge the device very frequently, making it quite inconvenient. Anyways, back to what I was talking about before. The inert gases become excited. Eventually, they return to a relaxed state and releasing ultraviolet light. The UV light strikes a phosphor, exciting it, which produces a color. Lastly, a major problem with plasmas is screen burning. This issue occurs when a still image is left on the screen for an extended period of time. This causes the phosphors to overheat and enter a permanent excited state, which makes them lose their luminance. The phosphors cannot return to their normal state, which is why the image is left on the screen. This process is a highly exothermic reaction, which releases a lot of heat. And here's an example. The plasma screen at the airport is on every day, 
constantly displaying still images for a long period of time. As we just learned, this causes screen burning, so you can actually see the previous images which could not be removed. One way of avoiding screen burning is by using a liquid crystal display, or LCD television screen instead. Instead of gas chambers and plasma screens, LCD screens have electrodes. Electrodes, which conduct electricity by carrying electrons, are used in LCD displays. Some of the electrodes come in contact with the liquid crystals, which causes them to change their alignment. Varying the electricity changes the alignment of the liquid crystal. This changes the amount of light that passes through. This is how LCD displays create different shades of red, green, and blue. Screen burning is not prominent in LCD screens because the excitation of gases is not involved, so there is nothing that returns to a relaxed state. The liquid crystals do not quote-unquote freeze up when displaying a still image for a long time because liquid crystals react predictably to change electricity. When the electricity to the liquid crystal decreases, it will move back to its normal position. Hopefully you were edutained. You know that screen burning part? You could compare that to a hypercade, you know? Because their hyperstate has become their stable state, and they don't return to that non-hyperstate anymore. You know? Any anyways, here are the plays of the week. So here's a model of an LCD pixel. We are going to demonstrate how this pixel works to produce a certain color and a certain picture throughout the screen since the screen is made up of many of these little pixels. So these 3D glasses will act as a polarizer and as a liquid crystal. An electrode is attached to the liquid crystal. So electricity travels to the electrode and depending on how much electricity there is determines the alignment of the liquid crystal. So this one is a liquid crystal, this one's a polarizer. Increasing the electricity to the electrode changes the alignment of the liquid crystal more. So as I turn up the electricity, changes the alignment of the liquid crystal. But it's hard to see, but it actually, the amount of light that actually passes through is less because it's actually being blocked by the liquid crystal. The liquid crystal actually twists and blocks, so then there's actually less light that travels through. Here's actually a better example. Okay, so this now represents a plasma pixel. Inside the plasma pixel, there are gas chambers. Electricity excites the gas chambers, and which causes the electrons to fly around and eventually strike a phosphor, producing light. Uh, to change the shade of the color, the pulse of the electricity must change, which will be demonstrated. A slow rate of change produces a low intensity of color, and a higher rate of change produces a high intensity of color. And uh, you can't actually see this on your TVs because it refreshes at about 60 times a second. And these are the misplays of the week. Hi, welcome to Camp Center. I'm Jay Onright. I'm Dan Oto. <laughs> 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 okay, I'm keeping that. Okay. <laughs> Camp Center. I'm Brandon. Oh my god. <laughs> hi, welcome. Oh. <laughs> you've done this like, you said hi like at least 30 times. <laughs> I know. Okay. Then you have to put the ending music. Da 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 Well, that's a wrap, boys and girls. And Miss Chu. Thanks for watching our first episode of Camp Center. And we hope you were thoroughly edutained. <laughs>